Hi guys, Badger Bing here. Today I'm going to be checking out the Asia Electric G Limited F17, but let's just call it what it is. It's a WETEC brand in disguise. This video was made possible by SFC Airsoft, and they sent me this pistol for review. Thanks to them for making this happen. With the intro out of the way, it's that time again. Pour yourself a cup of coffee, put your feet up, and let's do this. The F-17 pistol is modelled after a similar looking handgun that was recently adopted by the US Armed Forces. The one we have here arrives in a plain old cardboard box. Included with the handgun and its magazine, we find a basic exploded diagram of the pistol, and the original inner barrel and bucking, because this one has a pre-upgraded TNT inner barrel, bucking, and maple leaf hop-up wheel. Now, the handgun itself is quite a ruggedly handsome piece, set in a matte black colour. It's also available in tan, but I find that colour disgusting, so because I'm Batman, I asked, does it come in black? And here we are. Prying it out of the box, and I was surprised how light it was. The polymer lower has a lot to do with it, but the slide doesn't have all that much weight in it either, so hopefully this'll have a snappy action. Speaking of the polymer frame, it really is comfortable, which is strange because it lacks any real contours or undulations. There's not much going on with it aesthetically, but it just works, and the material is a quality nylon fibre that feels lovely in the hand. The textured sides, front and back, promote a grippy surface, without being overdone. We have three slots for any weapon light accessories you may choose to adorn the F-17, and this X-300 looks right at home. The controls on the lower frame are straightforward enough. The slide lock and safety are present on both sides. They're quite low profile, and aren't as big and pronounced as ones you might find on an h &K. The safety has a deep and tactile click for safe and fire. I personally think the slide lock is too close to the safety, although that's probably an indication of the amount of time I've spent using an h &K handgun. The magazine button is in the ideal place where my thumb naturally gravitates towards it when reloading. The magazines shoot out of the magwell very quickly when you apply the tiniest amount of pressure to the button. It's too sensitive for its own good, really. The slide follows the design of the real counterpart fairly well. Of course, there is an absence of trade markings, but what can you do? It's unlicensed. This handgun has the ability to attach a red dot sight. It's such a cool feature, but it's something I've never actually tried, although I really like that concept. As it's a WE pistol in sheep's clothing, it has their standard threaded outer barrel, so you could attach a suppressor, or a muzzle brake, in addition to a weapon light and an optic. The three dot iron sights are well defined and easy to pick up, surprisingly so in low light conditions, but the front iron sight has some play in it. The final thing to note about the slide is the surface coating isn't very good, already it's starting to show signs of use. A disappointing aspect to this pistol is the fact that the outer barrel moves around a lot inside the slide. I hope it doesn't affect the accuracy, but I guess we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Taking off the slide to access the hop-up is a piece of cake. Charge the pistol and rotate the lever downwards and pull the slide forwards. Removing the screws behind the BBU will allow you to remove the optics plate. The beauty of this pistol is that it has a removable fire control chassis, very similar to the SIG M17 series that this is based off. The slight difference is that it has a small screw to secure the chassis to the frame. Unscrew that and then pull out the takedown lever then the internals can be extracted for cleaning and maintenance.
It's chrono time, and up first I'll be testing propane with Garda point twos. Our opening shot scores a relatively mild 312.5 FPS. Remember this has the TNT kit installed, so we should see a slight increase in numbers over the original barrel. Our last round comes out at a speed of 292.1, which was the lowest recorded shot out of 19 BBs, the highest being 323.0 and an average of 306.7. Not too bad. Next I try CO2, and immediately we hit its highest reading, at 370.8, with the following shots relaxing to around and below the 350s. What I noticed with CO2 is that it's less consistent on the chrono, with variances between the shots being as much as 10 or more FPS. The lowest reading was 311.2, which is a steep descent from 370 FPS within 14 rounds, and I was firing once every 5 seconds, so it's not like I was running them off in quick succession. CO2 may have the power behind it, but using propane it showed a steadier decline from the first to the last. How different will both of these gases last in this F-17? Well, first I test out propane, as I have more control over how much gas I want to fill. I fire one shot per second during these tests, and on a 5 second gas charge I got 84 shots. On 10 seconds I was able to achieve 110 shots, although I think the gas tank is completely full at 7 or 8 seconds. CO2 can achieve 90 shots, although after 50 shots it becomes increasingly weak. Shooting the F-17 reveals a delightfully snappy recoil sensation, and this surprised me coming from a metal slide handgun. Combined with its short take up on the trigger, and its equally short reset, it makes for a sharp and nimble shooting experience. Now the trigger performance is good, there is a clear wall, although I will say it's all verging on being too light, and you can easily breeze past that wall and let off a shot before you know it. The recoil sends a jolt through your wrist, and can send your aim off target if you're not holding it firmly. On mild to warm, and of course during hot temperatures, the pistol really does rock. You don't need any more than a 5 second green gas charge to get it through the 19 shots, and have a positive slide lock as the end result. When the temperature decreases slightly, and you cycle the pistol quickly, sometimes it can fail to lock the slide on empty. Cold for it. And this can happen due to rapid cooldown and the slide not tracking back far enough. When you are using this in cold conditions, it turns sluggish and unimpressive. This is generally why I avoid metal slide handguns. Using green gas, they just don't give you that same reassurance that it'll keep you safe in game. So what happens when it's cold? But it's okay as CO2 magazines are available and will restore the hard kicking, fast shooting action, even when the weather is less than comfortable. The negative aspect is the increased FPS if your local field requires lower speeds on the clock. It's freezing out here, but CO2 gets it through. Now we come to the accuracy test. Using Jeff's Bio 3s at the 20 meter target, the groupings on the first sheet were pretty good. 
I made 11 holes out of 19 shots, and they landed in a group around the size of a fist. The next sheet only hit five times, and the rest of them went all around the target. The third time I struck the paper 11 times once again. I added more adjustment on the hop, which moved the impacts higher up on the page. Remember this has the TNT kit installed, so it really has the best chance at winning. With the increased hop upsetting, I tried to override any inconsistencies with heavier BBs. The Jeff Bio 4s might have gained a couple of extra rounds on target, although they took up more room across the paper, and didn't group them as neatly as the 3s did. I recorded some last minute groups on a frosty day, and the results with point .4s scored very similar to the original test with 3s. I'd say it's certainly capable of organising good groupings, but it does have its moments, half of the magazine hitting everywhere else but the target. If we're talking about distance, SFC have said it can put shots out to 50 metres if I'm using point .4s. And they're right, it can. Just the spread of those BBs is so wide that it could fit within the profile of a small family car. I tagged the target a couple of times, but it really wasn't repeatable. 50 metres is pushing it. 30 metres and in will be optimal. I tend to put quite a few BBs through each airsoft gun I review, often conducting the same tests several times just so I can see its consistency. During my final phase is where the pistol started to develop a problem where it would fire on fully automatic. The sear engagement failed to lock the hammer, and the result is the hammer would carry on dropping, thus fire automatically. It's so frustrating to have a gas blowback not even make it through its first review. In essence, this would be easy to put right, given how accessible the trigger mechanism is. SFC were going to send me the replacement piece so I could fix it myself. However, it was just my bad luck that something else went wrong. The slide began to break and chip away, right where the optics plate sits. The metal used for the slide isn't durable, and perhaps the inclusion of an optics cut design is a detriment to its overall strength judging by the thin material in this location. Maybe its chances of survival are higher if it's used only on green gas. CO2 could be too hard on it. SFC have kindly sent me another F-17 so I could finish this review. The AEG F-17 gas blowback pistol. Its overall build is solid and the polymer frame feels good in the hand with excellent grip. It offers you a lot of modern features such as the accessory rail, threaded outer barrel and it's optics ready. The magazines have good gas capacity, and CO2 versions are also available. It's enjoyable to shoot, and with CO2, it really punches the slide back. The range is good, the disassembly is easy, as well as its ability to remove the fire control chassis. The trigger action is positive, as is the safety catch. Spare parts availability is high, and finally, the F-17 is very affordable, even the upgraded version I have here. The bad news is, on top of the issues I've already mentioned with it firing on fully automatic, and the slide shedding weight by breaking off excess metal, this pistol is not licensed, so it cannot have the correct SIG M17 markings. The trigger looks completely wrong, like it's so wrong it's painful to look at. The capacity is quite low, 19 BBs, or 20 with one in the pipe, and its huge baseplate gives you the impression it holds more than 25. 
The magazines themselves need a good shove to get them to lock into the frame properly. The slide finish comes off very quickly. The outer barrel wobbles around in the slide. The accuracy is alright, but despite the efforts of the upgraded barrel and the bucking, it's a setup that has given me a lot of flyers off paper. And if you're not using CO2 or some really hot gas, cold weather performance is awful. The F-17 has a strong presence, although I firmly believe the trigger is a physical embodiment of nightmare fuel, it has a lot going for it with its highly upgradable modularity. The worst thing about it is the fact that my initial unit developed faults a mere 1000 BBs into its service life. It's not an isolated incident either, I've heard reports of other F-17s turning into machine pistols. As for the slide breaking apart, it's hardly surprising, the metal here is so thin. I think if you give the F-17 some time to mature, it can become a durable and reliable handgun, much like their other pistols. And there's tons of players out there still enjoying WE gas pistols, and they cannot all be wrong. Check out the link in the description where you can find this F-17. Massive thanks to SFC Airsoft for supplying not just one, but two pistols for this review, and ensuring that I have plenty of magazines so I'm not constantly reloading. Throughout the troubles this pistol has given me, they've kept in contact and they've really looked after me, knowing full well that my review would be truly honest. Pay their website a visit and take a look at some of their upgraded products. Their upgraded Gasperbeck MP7 that I reviewed recently, that thing can make hits at sniper rifle ranges. It's crazy. Have a look. Thanks for watching the video my friends, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like, and if you haven't already joined me, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll know exactly when my latest video goes live. For regular updates, you can check out my Facebook and Instagram. So until next time, look after yourselves. Catch you in a bit.